is uh, Lindsay, who's going to talk about the Rivers and Riders program. Thanks, John, uh, and thank you all for coming. Um, and it's fantastic to have this. Um, I'm sorry you're crouched on the uh, on the stairs, but it's uh, it's a good indication of how important you all feel this subject is, particularly now, um, with cuts and with the kind of uh, vengefulness in the air um, in terms of, uh, of people who offend uh, society's mores. Um, I thought I'd just describe what readers and writers who put together this evening, what we actually do. Um, and, uh, and then I'd like to uh, do the official launch of this, which you can all get for one night only, a free copy, of, and I'll talk about that. But first, um, Readers and Writers is one of the four programmes of English Pen, and we, we just date writers with prisons and with places of detention. And you'll hear from Alex Weedle and Mark Haddon, who are both uh, tremendously popular and successful uh, writers with, um, uh, with readers and writers. Um, we, in the last year, we've been into 15 prisons. We reckon we've uh, made contact with about 800 prisoners, uh, men, women, and young people. And the format is that um, uh, a writer goes in, his or her books are sent to the prison um, or detention centre before the visit so that people have got a chance to read the books. It doesn't always happen, but at least they've got the books, they then get to keep them. And then the author goes in and has a two or three hour or maybe a whole day session in that prison. Um, and they are wonderful. I, I went uh, fairly recently to um, a session with um, Meg Rossoff, who's a, an award winning children's writer, to uh, Holloway. Um, you're sitting there crouched down <laughs> in the library, wonderful library. In um, and it was uh, fantastic. It was a, a really good, Irene had really matched the writer um, with the audience. Um, and Meg Rossoff writes, she, she, she describes her rebellious childhood. There was a lot of nodding going on from uh, the women. But it was a really wonderful event, very um, engaging, very vibrant. And you could see that the people attending, the prisoners uh, attending the event, were getting loads from it. And Meg was getting a lot from it as well. Um, and I think the writers will, would agree with that, that for a writer to go into uh, a prison or a detention centre, a secure unit, is really interesting and, and rewarding. Um, and there was one woman I remember at, um, at Holloway who said, a, a middle-aged woman in London, and she said, um, my son comes here, she said, and she, he says to me, oh, mum, it must be terrible for you being here, it's awful. And she says, I see, oh, yes, it is, it's awful. And she said, but actually, I'm having the best time of my life because she had a clean break had been in, we had been in, there were literacy programs, there's a very good library in Holloway, and she had found all sorts of things um, which she had not come across before. Um, which brings me to... Um, what readers and writers, what we think our great calling card is, um, which is in a sense captivity, an audience, apart from uh, in, in, in young people's institutions where there's a huge turnover, a very fast turnover, and that's a difficulty for us. But um, we, we are able to, to get people who are not going to be anywhere else, um, and, we can, and it's immediate, and it's valued, um, and we know that what we do is important. We also want to expand it, but I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, but it's, a, it's not just us, it's not just Irene and Philip, it's also we thank the librarians and the prison staff and the various institutions who do really wonderful work sort of navigating through a very complicated set of schedules and court appearances, venues, um, uh, emergencies, but they get us, they let the dog see the habit, we get there, um, we have these events. So a big thank you to the librarians and prison staff who are here and the ones who are not. Thank you to the publishers, because we get the books, the author's work, at a really nominal price, sort of giveaway price. So a big thank you to them, we couldn't do it without them. Um, thank you to the prisoners and to the people in detention who come along and who provide us with extraordinary um, insights and rewards. Um, and a big thank you to the authors, um, obviously, who, uh, uh, and writers who, who, who go miles and miles you know, all over the country and, um, and really give their, give of their absolute best. Um, when turning to uh, the, the people <coughs> who contribute, the prisoners, the people in detention, this, the book that saved my life, is our first uh, 
publication from our prisons and uh, from, the, from the prison section of Readers and Writers. Um, and it's an absolutely wonderful um, compendium. We ran a competition called Writing Freedom and it was advertised in uh, the newspaper Inside Time. So thanks to Rachel for organising that. Um, and we got 300 entries for this competition um, from 70 uh, prisons and institutions. Um, and they're terrifically high standard. And the first, uh, the winner, um, which is called uh, The Book That Saved My Life, uh, by Darren Pash, who's at Gartree. Um, and he's written a very interesting essay about a book which saved his life called Man's Search for Meaning, written by a Viennese psychiatrist and neurologist called Victor Emil Frankl. So I don't know if I've read this or have heard of him. Lisa has. Lisa Pignolesi, I'm the last person. Um, and it's a, very, it's a very fascinating description of how he came across this book and how it sort of worked in with his own life and enabled him to, I'm not going to move in a horrible phrase, but enabled him to understand his predicament and how to get out of it. Um, he said, Man's Search for Meaning is more than another book. It was the book that saved my life. And then there's another, um, uh, if I can just find it, an essay called Freedom by Darren Jenkins, <coughs> who's at Shepton Mallet Prison. Um, and it starts, he was, and, and this book, his sense of freedom came from being gay, not being able to come out when he was outside, but being able to come out when he was inside. And he starts off this essay, I was behind bars for most of my teenage years and the majority of my adult life so far. Ironically, I found my freedom when I came to prison. And it's just a description of how that happened. Really interesting, so do pick up your free copies. Um, how am I doing on five minutes? I've lost oh, so, so, all right. <laughs> I think I nearly did 10, so, so I'm, I'm in some difficulty here, but yeah, well, exactly. another, another minute or so. Yeah. He was without sin, um, I know. But what I wanted to, I wanted to um, add um, our voice, my voice, to John's call to, for some solutions. Because as good as we are, the readers and writers, um, as good as writers in prison is, as good as um, the, uh, Nina's organisation is, as good as all the myriad organisations working in prisons and detentions are, as the detention centres are, I really feel that we need, and we've discussed it, this a lot, we think that this is a time, a huge change in the governance of prison, much more privatisation, but it's an opportunity for a much more, I don't want to use the word joined up, but collaborative and cooperative approach to, to, to get greater maths in terms of what is on offer in prisons. I mean, we, we know about the difficulties, we know about the, um, the, the, the actual organisational and admin difficulties in individual prisons, but we really think that if we came together, um, as many organisations as are here um, tonight, and if we said, look, we know that, for all the reasons that John has given, that illiteracy is hampering <coughs> rehabilitation, it's hampering the um, the, the ability of, of uh, uh, institutions to be to have compliance, to have a sense of security. Um, we know that illiteracy builds up frustration, and we know that literature, for all of us, whether you're inside, outside, wherever you are, literature, access to books, the unique access we can give to writers is good for us. It is productive. It is enriching. Um, and I know there are people here, um, Erwin Jones is here, uh, Jones is here um, and I hope we'll hear from you, um, among other people, about the impact of literature, not literacy, but literature, and the access to literature in prisons and places of detention. That's what we want to, we want to, we can do more, and I'm sure you can do more, um, <coughs> and other organisations can do much more if we're enabled to, and if we're welcomed and if there is some strategic um, objective on the part of prison authorities, Ministry of Justice, and I really think that we should start a fairly focused campaign from this evening for the acceptance of what we do and the promotion of what we do <coughs> and the good that we do. I'll stop there. Sorry.